In this tutorial, I want to talk about a potential problem that people can have when they're working with standard definition or other footage. Now, when you add standard definition to a high definition timeline, what Sony Vegas effectively does is scale the end result. Now, a scale is OK, but it's never going to be very high quality. So there is a plugin by a company called Boris FX, which allows you not just to scale the item, but actually to up res it. In other words, increase the resolution. So you can take a standard definition item, you can put it on a high definition timeline, and you can up res it so that it looks like and behaves as a high definition asset. Now, clearly there's going to be limitations. If you haven't got a really high quality standard definition or lower definition item to start with, when you up res it, if the quality isn't there, you're not going to be able to see it come through. But if you've got a good high quality original clip in standard definition and you apply the Boris FX up res, you're going to end up with a very high quality high definition clip that's been up resed from the standard, which is much, much better than scaling, which is the standard performance that you would expect in Sony Vegas. So I've got a timeline here and I'll just show you the project properties. The project properties are HD. This is an NTSC timeline. I'm going to click OK and I'm going to go and find a standard definition item. So I'm going to go to my Explorer and I've got a few here. So let's just take uh, one of these ones here. So some people moving and I'm going to drop this on my timeline, which will, as you know, add it to my project media. It says, do you want to set your project settings? I don't. So I want my project settings to remain HD, but I've got an SD item on here. And as you know, we've got a, a scaling taking place. And when you output a highly scaled item, you're going to lose quality. It's not going to look as good as if it's been up -resed. OK, so we've got the item on the timeline, but actually what we want to do is up -res it. Now I'm going to go to my Project Media tab. And when I go to my Project Media tab, I've got the item here. Now the first step in this process is that you actually need to set the aspect ratio, the pixel aspect ratio, as a square pixel, even if the original wasn't. Now this particular item happens to be originally a square pixel item. But sometimes you get items that aren't square pixel. But even so, you need to go to the actual item. You can either right click in the timeline and go down to properties, or you can select the item up here and you can right click and go to properties, or of course you can click the properties button here. And that's what I'm going to go to. And you need to make sure where it says pixel aspect that you have it at square. Now, often you'll have an NTSC or a PAL or what you might have here, and you, you would have the item coming in as these. But when you select the item and you click square, and if you have multiple items selected, by the way, you can change them all in a group. You don't have to do them all individually. When you click square, they will be seen as being square, even though the original wasn't square. Now, that's just one of the items that goes with the workflow, and we have to live with that. So I'm going to click OK. Now the item's actually in there. I can now go in and set the item as it should have looked without any scaling inside an HD viewer. So here's the event, and here's my event pan crop. I'm going to click on the event pan crop. I'm actually going to zoom in out a bit so we can see it a bit better here. Hold the control key so it doesn't dock anywhere. And let's just make it a little bit smaller. There we go. So there's the item as it is scaled. So it's scaled to 720 by 480. And it's kind of important that you remember those figures. Sometimes I write them down if I'm doing various ones because you can get different sizes. But remember, 720 by 480. Now what we need to do, remembering those figures, is we need to reset up the viewer so it shows a full HD view which means we need to change the width and the height to 1920 by 1080. Now, often when you come to this item, you'll find that this locked aspect ratio item is selected so that when you start typing in here, if I type 1920 and I just click away to accept it, you'll see that it's already given me another version here because they're locked together. And if I was to change this to 1080, that would change again. So you need to unlock the aspect ratio. Then you can go in and change that to 1080. Now, that's your high definition viewer and that's as it would look and you can click OK you don't need to come back to that that's as it looks now that's the size of a standard definition item inside a high definition timeline so you can see how much it is scaled when you bring it in which means you are losing detail now we can actually apply the Boris FX up res plugin now this particular plugin is one of many plugins from Boris FX I'm just going to go to their website very briefly 
here is the Boris FX website, borisfx.com, and you can see that when we get to the VFX, you can see there's 175 different VFX and compositing plugins. And you don't have to buy them all. You can buy the complete set, but you can also buy individual items. So if we go to products, you'll see that you've actually got continuum units. I've got continuum complete, which is all of them. I can go down to Sony and find them. But you've actually got the units. And when you go to the units, the one we're looking for is image restoration. When I click on image restoration, you can see that it's a $299 item to buy. And in my opinion, it actually works out being a lot cheaper to buy the whole suite if you want to buy these bits and pieces. You will get a whole bunch of filters to go with the item. So you can go and buy it from Boris FX. You can actually have a trial period. I think it's 14 days where you can download it and try it out. Really powerful product. Okay, so now it's in my Sony Vegas. I'll find it under my video effects. So I can either get it to the event effects button in the timeline or I can go to my video effects. And usually they come out with all of them showing. You can see this whole load of BCC and it can get a little confusing. But if you buy individual items and you don't buy the complete package, you'll see that you've got them here. And you can go and find the one that you want. So there's image restoration. I can open up image restoration and I can find up res, take up res and actually drop it onto the event and let go. And here it is. OK, so this is the actual item. So I've got my event pan crop, which we've dealt with before. And here is the up res ready to apply. Now, this is where we need to specify what the original item was like. So I'm going to click source and I'm going to say, what was it like? Well, now I know that this original one was actually a square pixel. But if you remember, its size was 720 by 480. Now, you do have particular selections you can go for. So I could have gone to the 720 by 480. If it is non-standard, you click on custom size and then you can actually type in the actual items here. Then we can go down to transform and we can decide how it should look. So you can see it's already starting to fit. Okay, so it's already looking good. If I just turn it off for a minute, you'll see that that's the original. We've applied BCC up res already. It's up resed it. It's taken into account the size of the original pixel aspect ratio and the size of the original video that we brought in. Okay, you can unlock X and Y. So you can actually squish it or stretch it if you want. And in fact, there is even an option down here which allows you to distort to fit which we're not going to actually use. But this is where we decide how it's going to look. And I'm going to select fill frame crop because I want it to fill the frame when we're actually finished. And it's actually gone in. And now I can play with the X scale up and down so I can get the exact place I want. Now, if you want to be really careful, you'll find that these controls are quite rough. If you hold the control key where you drag that handle, it gives you a lot more control over how it should look. And you also have a little button here that says center. Well, how should it look? Because obviously it is cropped. You're not seeing the whole item. So you can play around till you get the exact look that you want by going for the center. So I'm going to say I want to see more of the people there. So let's just pull it there. OK, so that will suit me. That's perfect for what I want to see. So that's the transform done. But now the transform's done, the important thing is to say what sort of quality do I want? Now at the moment it's just using default fast. But actually the ones I usually go for the ones that say magic and either magic smooth or magic sharp and they tend to have a few more algorithms in there to make it look a lot better so if I click magic sharp you see the image sharpens off by the way notice I'm at best full quality okay so this is sort of the end result size that we're going to see and of course I can actually make it a lot bigger if I want to so we can get a better view of what it's going to be like this is at 1920 by 1080 but also you do have the ability to still go in and sharpen it even more if you want to. But one of the things you should always be careful about with sharpening is, oh, you can overdo it and the end result looks terrible. Um, less is more with sharpening. A little bit of sharpening goes a long, long way. So if you suddenly drag up lots and say, oh, that looks a lot better. When you play it back a bit later on, it's going to look awful. So just be a little bit careful. So you can add a little bit more sharpening if you want. Or alternatively, you can go to Magic Smooth. I think Magic Sharp is probably going to work for me. And that's made the item up resed. So the resolution has been added into the item. So rather than having the individual scan line stretched so it looks awful, we've actually taken the item and we've increased the overall resolution. Now, I actually worked on a project not so long ago where I had lots of 4x3 footage that the people wanted to bring into a new HD workflow. And we used up res all the way through that to create items that looked like they belong. However, there is sometimes a problem that's not particularly bad in this one but the problem is that sometimes you actually increase noise in a low light image so if that's the case and you have brought this particular suite notice the image restoration module has actually got one that says 
noise reduction. Now I'm not going to go through the whole noise reduction thing. I don't really need to do it on this particular clip because it is pretty good anyway. But it talks about two different types of noise, temporal and spatial. And basically temporal is noise over time. So when you watch the video back, you can see noise as it goes through time. Spatial is noise inside the frame. Okay. So just bear in mind, you've got two different types of noise. And when you actually start to do smoothing, temporal and spatial, you can soften the image, but the end result can be worth it. Okay. I'm going to get rid of that one. Don't really need that one. And I'm going to show you one more example. And this one's a crazy example. Okay. Here is some camera phone footage. Okay, here is a fountain. Just going to double click the fountain. Okay, I took it sideways. I took this many years ago, and this is over in Rome. And I actually want that item inside my project. So I'm going to drag it to my project media tab and drop it in there. Okay, and shut that down. Don't need it anymore. Here is the item, and you can see its size is 352 by 288. Okay, 352 by 288. All right, so it's, it's pretty unusual in what it is, but I want to put it on this HD timeline. Okay, so I'm going to drop it on here and I'm going to click on it and I'm going to choose my, in fact, I'll choose the item here and I'm going to go to its properties and I'm going to make sure it's square pixel. It's coming as square pixel, so we're going to live with square pixel. 352 by 288, but it's on its side. So we've got to deal with that now. So what I'm going to do is click OK and follow the same workflow. So we've made sure that the pixel aspect ratio is in square. Go to event pan crop. Okay, and with the hold the control key so make sure this doesn't dock uh, with the lock aspect ratio unchecked i'm going to make it 1920 tab 1080 enter on my number pad and the other thing i'm going to do i'm going to zoom out a bit on this one okay is i'm actually going to rotate it now you can hover over the edge and rotate I do need to rotate it because obviously the aspect ratio is incorrect. What you need to do is go to, in this particular one, minus 90. So I'm going to go minus 90, enter. Okay, so actually that's the wrong way around. I want plus 90. So I'm just going to get rid of the minus, enter. Okay, so that's now the right way around sitting on my timeline, sitting inside my HD comp. And you can see it was really small to start off with. Okay, so now I'm going to apply up res. And I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to click here in the event fx and i'm going to select it and you can see here it is image restoration you can have all but i'm going to choose image restoration i'm going to up res i'm just going to double click it and click ok right so it's already made a bit of a difference now if you remember the first thing you need to do is say what the source was the source actually was square pixels however when we talk about width and height because i have rotated it I now need to swap these over or swap over the figures. I can actually see it here. It says five, uh, 352 by 288. So I need to put 288 at the top and I'll need to put 352 at the bottom. Okay, so that's actually the item. Now I can go to transform and I can say the same thing. I actually want to fill the frame crop. Gosh, that looks terrible. But of course, bear in mind, I can play with the center. So I can choose which bit of the item I want to see. I want to see more of the fountain. And also I want to scale it. Let's just look at the scale. How bad is the scale? Pull it back a bit. No. So yeah, about there. Now it's really poor footage. That's because it's a very old camera phone. But I've got a different part of the frame that I'm actually looking at. So that's looked on. And I can say, right, what quality do I want? And again, I'm going to go for Magic Sharp. Magic Sharp. And if I want to, I can sharpen it a little bit more. And actually when you've got camera phone footage, a little bit more sharpening sometimes looks a little bit better. Now let's just, just try a different place on this particular one. There's a little bit more. It's not going to look fantastic, clearly, because it's a very old footage. But even so, for what it is, for camera phone footage taken back seven years ago on a very small camera phone, brought into an HD timeline, I think it's pretty impressive. And that's by using up-res. And if I feel that noise is a problem, what I'm looking at, then I can, of course, go back and actually apply the denoise. And let's just see this this plays through. Let's just have a little play. <laughs> Turn off the audio, just mute the audio track. I just play. Okay, I didn't know how to hold a camera phone. I'm not even sure I took this particular one. But even so, you can see we're getting some sort of playback get some idea of what it looked like all that time ago. And if I was to turn off the effect, you can see what it originally looked like. It looked like that. So it just shows you what a difference it can make. So that's BCC UpRes, a really powerful plugin in an HD timeline. 
My name's Andrew Davis. I hope you found this tutorial useful and thank you for watching. Thank you.